after learning how to make a new environment for our data science project, what would be the next thing that we are going to do? The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to pre-process and clean our data. So these two steps are actually very important for us to be able to ready our data for machine learning, algorithm, and a lot more. But before we're going to do the pre-processing of our data, what we're going to do is that we're going to prepare our data for this kind of process. So with this, we need to know how to read the data and we need to have an overview of the st structure of our data because by doing so, we would be able to understand how our data looks like. We would be able to have the descriptive statistics of our data. We would be able to identify whether or not there are missing values in our data set and these particular things must be dealt with accordingly before processing our data for machine learning algorithm and other analysis. So before we continue, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free data science lessons for you. We do have lessons on mastering machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, the different data science tips, and all of these are for free to improve and grow your career in data science. Please don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will be notified every time we have a new video. We have a new lesson for you. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and the circle of influence. So the thing that we're going to do is that we are going to go to our environment that we've created for this project and we named it energy prediction or energy prediction which was supposed to be energy prediction but then we got a mistake in spelling prediction so with that we just decided to continue the name energy prediction because it still doesn't matter because it's just the name of our environment but it could have been better if of course we did it correctly but just for the purpose of this machine learning project, we will just use energy prediction. So let's go to our environment. So this is our Anaconda prompt and what we're going to do so that we would be able to go to our environment is we're going to activate our environment. So let's have activate energy prediction. Okay, so our energy prediction is now activated and the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to go to the location path and we're going to copy paste it okay cd okay and then we're going to go now to jupyter notebook enter so we could proceed to jupyter notebook Right. So let's wait for a while. And we are here. So the thing that we're going to do is that we're going to go to new and we are going to click Python 3. And let's wait for a while while loading. Right. So we are now in here. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we're going first to import pandas. So import but in some cases, guys, you would be able to find out that your pandas is not installed and you could receive a notification that it's not in your system. So the thing that you're going to do every time you are given that kind of prompt warning is you're going to go to, again, Anaconda prompt. And all you have to do is you are going to activate your environment first. energy prediction which is of course our environment and then with there you're going to pip install pandas and you're going to do this every time you're going to use a certain library or package okay but then because we have already have pandas in our system what we're going to do is we're just going to okay just for the purpose, right? At least you could see how it goes. And it says here, it's already satisfied because we have already downloaded that into our system. 
let's go back to this one. So with this, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have an access to our data set. So to do this, we're going to have this code. So let's just use the DF. The DF is our name actually, the name of our data frame. I think everybody is very much familiar with this kind of process. And to do this, if you could still be remember the name of our data here is energy data. So we're going to write here the name energy data dot CSV. Okay. And for us to be able to know what is inside our data set, we're going to have df dot head and let's enter. And by default, we are just given five entries. And it says here, we have five rows. Of course, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we have 29 columns. So the columns here actually represent the variables that we have. So in our last lesson, we already identified what these variables are. But if you would like to really know how many rows we have, then what we're going to do is we're going to have this. So we will have df.shape. Then let's enter this. And when this one is executed, then we could see that it has 19,735 rows. And of course, we do have 29 columns. And with that, we could see that this data set is not actually a small data set but it is somewhat a large data set so this is how you read the data and before we continue let's add here the cell so we could name the step that we've taken so that you would be able to properly see what we have done in this part of our machine learning project so let's insert the cell above then we will add just reading the data okay because we are just reading the data or let's change this to heading number one so we could see properly what step or process we've taken so after seeing and identifying the number of rows and the number of columns what would be the next thing that we're going to do so in this part of our project, it is always very important to know or have an overview of the structure of our data. And so with this structure, we first have to identify whether or not we could see null values because knowing that we have so many null values in a certain data set, then we could do some processes depending on the situation we have in our data. So in a way, in our separate video, we may as well have a lesson on data pre-processing and data cleaning because this is actually very important because there are actually a lot of methods we could do to deal with missing data. Let's just name this part data structure so that we would be able to again really properly see how it goes. So let's go to heading one then let's add cells. Okay. So as what we've said, we're going to identify the null values in our data set. So to do this, let's have df, I'm sorry, we're going to use small, df dot is null dot sum. So if we are going to execute this code, then what we could have is the different data about our columns or about our variables together with the number of null values we could see in each one of them. So as far as each one of our column or variable is concerned, we could see no null values. Actually, the downside of using the different data sets we could find on Kaggle, for example, and in our case we use UCI, is that the data set is most likely already clean. So this actually hampers the kind of skill that we are supposed to develop in ourselves which is how to do data wrangling, how to do data cleaning. But of course, in some cases, we could do that, especially when there are some columns that are not really useful. 
when it comes to dealing with our machine learning processes. So there is also one way to identify whether or not we do have null values in our data set. And I would like to show this one to you. And this is, we're going to use the info function. So df.info then okay so unlike using the is null function which just gives us the total number of null values of our data set the use of info function is more detailed than the first one it's because you could really see the number of non null values and in this case we don't have any because remember that we have 19,735 rows and here the count is non null which means we don't have any null values and here you could also see the data type so i don't need to discuss to you what object what int what floats are because these are actually very much basic so i suggest if you don't know yet what these things really are then you have to review the basics of python data structures or the data structures and the data algorithm so after identifying the presence or the absence of the null values, what would be the next thing that we are going to do? So with this, we need to have at least an understanding of the spread of our data, the descriptive presentation of our whole data set. And to do that, we are going to use the describe function. So we have df.describe. For each one, we could see the count, the mean, the standard deviation, then we could see the minimum, the maximum, the 25%, the 50%, the 75% of each one of our variables. So maybe you would like to ask me, what is count? So still remember that when we say count, it means the number of rows we have for each variable. So we have 19,735 and the mean is 97. Of course, as you could see here, we have different mean for each one of them. The reason is that each one has its own values. So it's different. And because it's different, then of course, we do have different standard deviation. And this actually the minimum of 25%, the 50%, the 75%, and here the maximum are actually the percentiles of our data. So if you could still remember in our statistics, basic statistics, we've learned about the five number summary. And these ones are the values of our five number summary, right? So again, if you don't know yet what these ones mean, then please review your basic statistics. But in our EDA or exploratory data analysis, we still have to go back to these things from time to time because these are actually very, very important. Okay, so... I always believe that you can always have a better presentation of your machine learning algorithm. You can maximize it if you always go through the process of exploratory data analysis and we're going to have that. And also, if you would like to present this descriptive statistics of our data to a certain visualization for each one of them so that we could really appreciate how they look like if they are presented in visual then that is also possible. And to do that, we're going to have this matplotlib. So here, we are using this line of code for us to be able to have a histogram of our data set. So here, you can actually have your own um, number here. For example, for example, for the bins, I just use here 50. Of course, you can also customize your bin size and also with respect to your fig size, you can also customize depending on the kind of taste that you have for your visualization. So now we are going to see how this one looks like. So we're going to plt that show, right? Then let's see. So it's just processing and we're going to wait for a few moments before we could see the result of so here it is, the result of each one, each of these variables. So for appliances, we have this kind of shape. And here, I would like to ask you, where are most of the values be found? It is here in this part of our graph. And what about for the lights, as you could see here? So 
what do these things mean? And f with respect to T1, this is almost a Gaussian distribution. And also for the T2, and also let's look at the others. And for the visibility, so this is the picture that we could see in here. For RV2, this is the picture. And for the RV1, this is how it is presented in the graph. So for now, I believe that there are actually a lot of questions coming out in your mind. Maybe you would like to ask me, so what is the significance of each one of them? How is one of them related to others? So these questions will be answered once we are in the exploratory data analysis part and also once when we are in the feature engineering parts because we have to select the kind of features we're going to use so that we can best use our machine learning algorithm. We are done with how to read our data and also having an overview of our data structure. So with that, we identified the null values and also we've created the visualization of the simple descriptive statistics of our data. So if you want to know more about this channel, please don't forget to click the cards on your screen because we do have a lot of data science courses for you guys. We do have Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, the Deep Learning Mathematics, the different data science tips that you and your friends can use to make your data science career the best and really very full of fun. So here you can always learn and upskill for free.